Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTube. This is Edka here. We are going to talk about my experience in playing the Diablo 4 Open Beta Weekends. ARPGs, RPGs, MMORPGs are kind of my mainstay of uh, gaming. Uh, it's the type of game I really get into. It's the one that keeps my attention. Um, and, you know, that's that's what I'm drawn to and I put tons of hours into the, these types of games so I feel confident that I can give you guys a solid take on my experience um, that leaves you with a little bit more information than you may have had and maybe a new perspective you didn't think about so I look forward to jumping into this with you all and uh, thank you for watching the Diablo 4 beta weekend has come and gone I was able to put in some great time into it thanks to taking the day off work, burning some midnight oil and plating the afternoons when the girls had their quiet time, and also having an awesome family and letting dad out of reading books in the evening. Don't worry mom had me covered. During this time I was able to level two characters to 25, a rogue and a druid, only playing on tier 2. Between the two I was able to see a large percentage of the side quests, main quests, beautiful cutscenes, and had an overall good experience. If you're coming into a Diablo game expecting hyper-realistic graphics, uh, you're going to be disappointed. If you are expecting absolutely stunning art permeating every frame, you're in the right place. Add in a sprinkle of well-established and well-implemented game mechanics, and everything just feels right with this game when playing. Movements are crisp and deliberate, and whether you are a refined gaming individual using skills with precision, or a clicking mad person like myself, this game feels responsive, and usually that death you had was more because of you and not because of any sort of delay or lag in the game. And the final ingredient in this is a world that is expansive, one that takes time to explore all the nooks and crannies, one teeming with surprises and things to find, adding in random elements and events, and you feel like you're at war with the forces of evil. We saw select zones and a large map, which was shown to us by Blizzard. When you compare this map for the first part of this game to the full world map of Diablo and all of a sudden you see that Blizzard now has space to bring us so much more content. To explore new areas of the world and see how the aftermath of the events of Diablo 3 have shaped this new world. Before I move on from this I need to put in my disclaimer. I feel like there is judgment which may or may not be deserved in the community and to be fair I expected it. A lot of times we forget how to give feedback that is usable and not critical to the point of confrontation. And to most of them I say, I think you overlooked that this was actually a beta, one that showed a small scope of what is coming and that the devs still have two months to polish and work to deliver that final kickoff version that we play in June. Again, at the end of the day, most do not know what the end game looks like. Most do not know how top tier legendaries with all five FXs are going to impact classes. They do not know the Paragon system and how simple or complex this game is going to be. Diablo 4 is looking like it wants to be a Diablo game. It doesn't want to be any sort of other game. And you're asking, well, the classes are going to be unbalanced. Absolutely. There's going to be times that classes are out unbalanced. There's some interaction that was not fully considered, tested, debugged. And that's going to, be, that's going to happen and that's okay. But the thing I want to watch for, and the thing I will judge Blizzard and the Diablo team the most on, is their ability to react and to implement changes and to continuously improve the game. I will judge them harshly and loudly if they are slow to react to these extreme imbalances, let exploits run rampant for long periods of time, or completely disregard the game for months, kind of like Overwatch 1, with absolutely no communication. But the thing that we need to remember is that big title games, AAA companies, they no longer measure success of a game if they sell millions of copies at lunch. They don't care about that. They consider it a success if they can keep people playing, and more importantly, paying for a season pass. And in order to do this, they have to be fully engaged with the pulse of the community. As stated earlier, I played the Rogue and the Druid during the beta, and each class felt like it did something different. I was able to play more with my rogue overall, and while playing the rogue, I also did more as a duo with House as compared to the soul leveling that I did with the druid. During this closed beta weekend, I was able to gear the rogue in all legendaries, all the Lilith statues, 100% exploration, and take on a Shava. 
The druid was a little bit more rush. I knew the path. I knew where the stupid guy tied up in chains was. I didn't have to worry about the statues. So I leveled my druid at a much faster rate, but had less playing time compared to the weekend before. So I got to that goal level of 25 with about 20 minutes to go before a Shava spawned. I was able to get the kill, but the timing was tight, so I didn't experience as much with that character. I personally enjoyed the movement and flexibility of the rogue, but I did have a few moments when I completely destroyed bosses on my druid that were tough on my rogue, due to the druid's ability to absolutely stay alive. Do I know what class I am going to main in June? Not quite yet, but I'm leaning more towards rogue. And I can't go much more into detail, um, especially on the other classes. I didn't get enough playtime uh, or testing to recommend the best builds, but what I can say is everybody feels like they have a role. I'm excited that each class seems to have a role, a diversity to it, because I think this diversity will play a huge factor in the end game. I feel like Diablo 4 is embracing the multiplayer aspects of an RPG and suspect that they will be encouraging it in the end game. Putting the best loot behind bosses that require teams to work together, communities, guilds, discord servers will now play a much bigger role than in any other Diablo game. And when you think about it, it makes sense. When you are part of something bigger, when you have people that rely on you, that drives a commitment to the game that will make you shell out some money for the season passes. World of Warcraft set the stage for this 20 years ago. WoW Classic is more popular than retail at this point, and it needs that community. It needs that group of people that you can trust. Just like in every game, especially those in beta, you're going to run into the things that don't sit right with you, or, you know, those stupid invisible walls out of the east gate, or the dungeons where you have the path down the middle that it just will not let you go through. But I think I'm going to focus on things that could have been done differently and still have time to develop or change or at least put the work in to start. I am trying to be open-minded as I do not want to be critical without understanding the full picture and without a potential solution. My first issue is um, not necessarily from the, the beta weekend, but a video that I will include in the description that comes from an interview with Rod Ferguson, General Manager Diablo. He stated that there is going to be a point where it's too expensive to refund all your talent points. It would be better to make a new character if you want to change your build. With 10 character slots, I feel like this is one of the most short-sighted philosophies I've found while getting hyped with creator interviews and playing the beta. There are some people that form attachments to their characters, and they want to play that character through thick or thin, and making it so they cannot change with the times and the content updates and the ever-changing tide of how a Diablo game will most likely play out, and then forcing them to play a different character will push some people away and, and just leave a bad taste in their mouth. There is a way that you could set up a quest chain or you have to gather some rare items together that would need to be farmed that would still give you that same sense that your choices matter, yes. that there is an impact on your time if you make a mistake or you want to try something else without completely relegating a character to the delete button because it cannot change with the updates. Next is what I'm going to call early game dungeons. The community is 100% correct that the first dungeons, which will play a role in the end game as we have to farm them for the aspects for classes, are overly repetitive, predictable, and not as fun. That feeling of taking the wrong leg of a dungeon and fighting, wasting resources and time, only to find a dead end, is an experience I have taken for granted in earlier Diablo games. Having randomized triggers, randomized density of mobs, elites, increased pool size, dungeon bosses, hell, even randomized types of monsters in the dungeon will all play a big part in providing fresh experiences when we have to run the same thing over and over and over again. And if you're worried about that specific loot job per dungeon, well, then set up a box or something at the end that you can provide your RNG that's not tied to a specific boss. I'm looking at you, freaking gibbering gemstone. I think Diablo 4 is leading the franchise in a new direction, one that will upset people, whether it's 
how the game plays or having to pay to get some seasonal rewards, but that constant funding should be a benefit of the game. Diablo uh, 4 associate director Daniel Briggs confirmed with tweets just recently about spells and skill intensity and that there are a lot of nuances and, th and things in this game that we have not seen yet. So I would hope that the continued communication from the Diablo team about new updates, content balances, and even some AMA sessions would give us a glimpse of what's to come. Not only now before the go live of this wonderful game, but also down the road as we kind of get a roadmap to understand where this game is moving. Two months is going to feel like an eternity with Diablo himself to wait, but I'm excited for this starting point and I think that the team of Diablo are the only ones that could cause this game to stumble out of the starting blocks. If you like something that I've said, if you disagree with something I've said, please leave a comment. Um, I, I love to read it. I'd like to get some other perspectives to potentially change my opinions. So feel free to let me know if you think something's stupid or if you agree with me. Or if you just want to say hi, that's that's fine too. And right as I was going in, the caveman is running out and I find the dead body. Kyle, can you explain why you killed him? <laughs> Kyle, don't no 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 no. No no no. Come on.